Hello, this is Jerry at the Movies, also known as Jerry Saravia, and uh, I'm back. I haven't done a video review uh, for YouTube since Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, so it's been a little while now. Um, the reason is because my first camera started recording sound but no picture, so therefore I had a little issue with recording anything, and I finally came up with the money to buy a new camera, so here I am. So, uh, although I write a lot of film reviews online, I have been on the internet for the last 10 years. Um, here I am to do more on YouTube, because I think it's just an exciting new way to talk to you out there and uh, anyone interested in movies. Now, normally I would rev review, excuse me, more sophisticated films, and I'd like to, but uh, I cannot t turn away from the prospect of reviewing Troll 2. Some of you may or may not have heard of Troll 2. There are other reviews on YouTube about this little genuine good-bad movie masterpiece of absolute crap, and yet there's still something charming about it. But let me explain further. Troll 2 came out back in 1990. As far as I know, it didn't really have a theatrical release, so it went directly to video. VHS in those days, long before DVD. And, um... I had heard of this movie a while back, uh, and I'd seen the first Troll, so I was, in which I didn't like, so I didn't feel the need to see Troll Two. Uh, that's kind of my rule of thumb. Unless it looks like it may be rotten, and it is rotten, I don't want to see the sequel. Uh, case in point, Deuce Bigelow, for example. I have no interest in ever seeing that sequel. And uh, anyway, so, but Troll Two, well. Um, kind of disappeared. It wasn't hardly known at all, and nobody talked about it for many, many years. Until, it seems, recently. And, uh, I don't know how to explain this renewed interest, except that I saw the film on, uh, on cable. And all I can tell you is that's the best damn good-bad movie I've ever seen. <laughs> There's no other movie I can compare Troll 2 to, really. Um, not even the original. Uh, Troll 2 is an in-name-only sequel, uh, which means that it bears no relation whatsoever to the original film that it's based on. Uh, and the director, Claudio Fragasso, who uh, is an Italian director who made Troll 2, has been known for this kind of thing before, that is doing films and putting in, slapping them with American titles uh, that bear no relation to the actual product. Case in point would be Terminator 2 with a Roman numeral 2 and Evil Dead 5. Uh, he did these films and I think he got sued for copyright infringement for using Terminator. But uh, these were done in the 80s and again they had no, uh, they weren't had nothing to do with the Terminator franchise or the Evil Dead franchise for that matter. So Troll 2 is his uh, other film that uh, is. I guess his best known film out of all the films he has done. And uh, it's about family vacationing in the town of Nilbog. And Nilbog stands for Goblin, which actually is the original title for Troll 2, Goblins. So it has nothing to do with trolls, but something to do with goblins, maybe. And they stay in this uh, house in Nilbog, and they're vacationing there, and this family that's there lets them use the house, and they supposedly leave. And, uh, let's see, what else happens? Well, they're in the town, there are goblins, but uh, they can shapeshift into humans, apparently. And they are trying to eat human flesh, I think. But the only way they can eat it, because they are actually vegetarian goblins, is if the humans consume something tainted with chlorophyll or some sort of green liquid, uh, green, a green ooze of some kind. And they have, they own a grocery store. I can't even talk about this movie without smiling. They own a grocery store in Nilbog, which, where they serve uh, mostly unrefrigerated milk. And it's not Parliament. And uh, the milk will make you, I guess there's green ooze in the milk, but it's not technically green milk. 
And I guess they have a 24-hour burger joint somewhere, which raises the question again, if they're vegetarians, what are they doing with... But anyway, the cheeseburgers have green ooze in them. Now, I myself would never want to eat or chomp on a cheeseburger that has green ooze in it, but that's just me. Um, as far as I can tell, that's really the plot. And so they... Now, the thing is that they're vegetarian goblins, and they want to eat human flesh. Uh, and for some reason, there's a witch in town who has what looks like a church for a home uh, and a crimson red bed and a gateway to Stonehenge. Uh, again, I don't know what any of this has to do with anything else. So Troll 2 is badly acted, it's badly made, and yet there's something charming about it. I can't really explain what that is. There's something about it. It was not intended to be what it is, which is, I guess, camp, but not really. It wasn't directed as such, which may explain one thing, or be explained, rather, by the fact that the crew was Italian, including the director, Claudio Fragasso, and he... they couldn't communicate with the actors, who were all, you know, American, but they spoke English, so they didn't understand. And the script, I guess, was written in English, so... There you go. They weren't directed this this cast uh, to do anything, um, um, because it was not in, it was intended to be serious, and it's anything but. But yet, strangely, it works. I can't again say what what it is that works about it. Um, yeah, there's an '80s dance scene in the movie. Uh, there's. Uh, which seducing a young teenage boy with corn on the cob that turns into popcorn. Um, again, the aforementioned uh, cheeseburger with green ooze in it. Um, yeah, there you have it. This is a, it's an unironic and unintended irony in this movie, um, which means that uh, it makes about as much sense as the movie itself. Uh, you have to see this movie. That's all I can tell you. Uh, it was shot in Utah. The actors, for the most part, never worked again in film, including the uh, the father who was not mentioning here. I forgot to mention his name, uh, but he's a dentist now. But anyway, getting back to the cult, the movie developed a cult reputation, and um, it's been shown in theaters, and there are fans, there are legions of fans for this movie. So, I, and I can see why. Uh, I mean, I can't explain why, but I can see why. Because I want to see it again. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Uh, I know this is not my best review in the world, but uh, Troll 2 is a special kind of movie. Uh, unlike, or I should say, pretty much like John Waters' Pink Flamingos, which is a good movie, Troll 2 is the kind of movie you can't unsee it. After you've seen it, you want to tell everybody that you saw it. That's how special it is. So do check it out. Um, Michael Stevenson, who plays a little boy in the film, who almost urinates on uh, cake and cookies that have this green icing so that his parents don't have to eat it, or his family don't have to eat them, so don't, you know, get corrupted by chlorophyll. But anyway, um, he directed a documentary, which I want to see, and it's playing in film festivals, and hopefully we'll get a limited theatrical release, and it's called Best Worst Movie. And it's about the making of Troll 2, and I want to see it. So that's all I can tell you. See Troll 2, look for it on cable, and or if you're brave, do rent it or buy it. I think you can buy it for less than $10. Uh, you, you may hate it, but you're not going to forget it. So do check it out. Um, anyway, next week I uh, will talk about some other movies, including Legend of the Lone Ranger from 1981. And... Uh, Time Rider, The Adventure of Lao Swan, and other stuff. And uh, this is Jerry into Movies, signing off. <laughs>